Alright, today we are at probably one of the coolest places that uh, you can think of and uh, you guys know I've been uh, wanting to be here for quite some time and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit uh, around if, uh, if you're not familiar with the logo We're going to come over here, I'm going to bring up this which is going to be Maybe this. Funny. And then we'll come over here Oh yeah! Say that. um, That's right, guys. Terran Tactical Headquarters. Check this out. There's a Terran right there himself preparing the table with all the John Wick guns. Uh, so we'll so we'll blur this on purpose. That's cool. That's gonna Secret. that's gonna create buzz. Is Terran gonna mess with it at all or no? It would be funny. Can you? I mean, you guys can do that, right? If he picks yeah, yeah. it up, you can follow the blur with him. And then we'll talk a little bit about the history of John Wick and the movies and the different guns in there. And then we can film some stuff with you quickly on the range, with specifically the Pit Viper. And we have that drone footage, which will be really awesome. Um, and then that—that's all. We, that would be it, I think, for you, unless there's okay. any of these other guns these guys want to capture footage for. Whatever they want. Planning for the new year. Yeah. All of them. All right, so let's start out here. Then. <laughs> <laughs> All of them, yeah. <laughs> I just don't know how All right. Stay Round two. Right? Let's go. Are there guns in the sarcophagus too? You want to start? Maybe. Yeah, we'll start. <laughs> if he has a little toy, only because I have an anecdote I want to bring up. Who's that shadow over there? Terrible. Check this out. Fun. And... Actually. Go. Hey, what's up guys? Eric from GetInTheWind.com and you guys know who this is. This is Taryn Butler. We're at his range today in Simi Valley, secret location. And speaking of secret, everybody wants to know what goes on behind the scenes. So I asked Taryn here to give me and some of the guys behind the camera here from Guns.com, Firearms for America, a tour of the facility. I'm pretty excited, I gotta be honest. So Taryn, thank you for taking the time to show us around. I appreciate it. So let's come on inside, guys. I, I'm told this is the green room, right? This is where, what is this room? What are we in? No, it's kind of a man cave or something. <laughs> man cave. It's just a, it's a room that kind of just, all the stuff that I like, you know, it's kind of in here. It's just a place to, we do our, our, our warm up reloads here uh, for the start of the class. With the AT4, with the, with the rocket launcher back yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, you gotta reload that fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and just uh, some of the movies that, that I love that inspired me. Dirty Harry is the reason why I'm standing here. What do you mean? Explain. Uh, as kids in the 70s, uh, my brother took me to see Dirty Harry and my dad also, and we were blown away. Everybody's watching Star Wars a few years later, but we just loved Dirty Harry. Then Magnum Force, that famous episode, yeah. that famous one where they're shooting the, the 44 Magnum versus the Pythons, and they're shooting cool. And even David Soul had a good, like, Hasasli stance back then, which was way ahead of his time for movies. And, and that competition that happened when Dirty Harry shot the no yeah. shoot. Yeah. We loved that so much, then started following the shooting sports and stuff like that. Then later on, Lethal Weapon in the 80s, Got me supercharged again. I think they're the two best cop movies ever made. I do love Lee Boyd. Do you ever pick these movies apart? Do you watch them and go, man, that's ridiculous. He's, his stance is wrong. Or, you know, military guys are known for Well, here's that. the what funny part. He came out about seven or eight years ago. No. I was really excited to meet him. Of all the stars, like he's... He, so he was here? Yeah. Oh. There's a video where I do the smiley face for him. And he's videoing it with an iPhone. What, what lethal weapon when he's at the range and he shoots the smiley yeah, face yeah, into the target? Yeah. So I got to do that for him. So it's like a bucket list thing. That's pretty cool. So it was pretty awesome and he was so cool. And uh, uh, But I asked him, I go, like, who trained you for the movie? He's like, I don't know. So he just threw a gun in my hand. I go, well, your grip was actually pretty good. You weren't like a cup of saucer nonsense, like, you know, James Bond yeah. or whatever. And he did a good job, you know? Oh, that's pretty. Uh, what so about and Scarface? These are. So is, is this a combination of movies that got you into. You know, it's a little bit of everything. My favorite movies mixed with movies I've worked on. Um, what have you worked on here? Uh, the Kingdom way back in 2006. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was a, that was a fun day. Uh, Peter Berg had everybody come out here. He's actually back out here but again. But 2006, so how long have you... Man, I think people, the world, found out, I think, about you with Keanu, right? Running, yeah. running and gunning. Yeah. But 2006, when did you get started? Was it before that, or was uh, that the Genesis? Probably, probably uh, Avatar 1... Uh, uh, they, we, we did some of that here, then avatar, all the other avatars that have been in the making now since the beginning of Mankind, we, we did all the training for that. Sam Worthington is one of the best shooters I've ever seen. Really? Yeah. The British guys are crazy. Like him and Aaron Taylor Johnson are freaking maniacs. They can't get guns they're, I mean, they're naturals. They're just natural. I know. It's just weird. They wouldn't have bad, bad habits. 
So that, uh, then when I kind of got into it, uh, my friend Chris Perez, he's a, one of my best friends in shooting. We, we, I won nationals, he was second place, all this fun stuff. And him and I, he's now kicking ass again out of retirement from being a cop. He says, hey, do you want to come down and watch Tom Cruise train for collateral? I'm like, where? It's like the Wayside Sheriff's Department by Magic Mountain. So I went down there and saw Tom there with Mick Gould, and Tom's hair's all long. He's walking along, Mick Gould's training. Like, he walks along, and Mick Gould goes, hey, he goes like, ah, 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 all this fun stuff. So I was watching all that, got to know Michael Mann, and uh, I wanted to go next level on the guns. So David Russo introduced me to him. He's, a, he's Rene Russo's brother mm. from Lethal Weapon. The oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was at, uh, he was seeing, he went to go see Michael Mann. He's like, the guns you're picking movies are outdated. Michael Mann's like, what are you talking about? I know guns. Because Michael Mann shot on this cup back in the day with Dave, uh, with Jim Zibiani. It's all another story. I want to ask you about that cup in a minute. Yeah, so so he shot Southwest Pistol League back in the 80s with Jim, who was a, who was a master class shooter back then, who was actually in Miami Vice, the famous scene, the, yeah, the shredding, yeah. the whole thing, amazing. I uh, got to know him, it's a whole other story. And so, long story short, he showed him some infinity guns. They were island barrel guns. To Michael Mann, he flipped out, like, oh my God, these are amazing. So, uh, I got to meet him. They put him in, my, in uh, Miami Vice, but the movie didn't like feature the guns at all, so I was like super disappointed, whatever. So, uh, but then later that gun showed up in Heroes. All through Heroes, see this infinity with oh, compensated yeah. gun, they yeah. tore him in glasses in show. Yeah, yeah all, was a great all show. five seasons, and then five years later, it came back for one failure season. I was able to get the gun back on there for no apparent reason. And that's kind of just a history of my Hollywood nonsense. Well, what about Margot? Because she's the, uh, not, no disrespect to all the men in the room, but she catches my eye first. Has she been here yet? No, her brother uh, shot here. He's a really, really nice guy. He's a stuntman. And uh, one day she'll be here. We, we love her. I think she's one of the best actors I, out there. I, uh, I, I will be available that day. Just and the director, it. John Wick, he helped her with her uh, her movie, uh, uh, Birds of Prey and stuff like that. Which was a great movie. And what do we got here? This, I mean, you got a director's chair? This is very cool. Um, in France, Keanu got me this. No this, kidding. Uh, oh, look at that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's a really kind of gift, you know, when we're doing what John Wick for. Now, but as a movie buff, because it's clear you're not just incredible shooter you're you're like a movie guy yeah how cool is that it's, it's super cool yeah actually i was mad mad because like it disappeared one day and i'm like it's stolen damn it and they brought it to an event so i was just like <laughs> i was like freaking out i mean as a movie fan that that's got to be pretty neat so all right we have to talk about this trophy here there are lots of names on this trophy i see lots of different names on this trophy coming back to 1963. well this is where the shooting sports started in the southwest pistol really? league in 1963 uh, Ollie Ray Chapman is a very legendary name. Uh, Buck Toddy, Ray Chapman, Al Nichols, back and forth shredding each other for years. Mike Dalton. And Dalton came on. Dalton's a great guy. He put matches on out here until he messed it up. Then there's Jim Zubiani. He was He's in Manhunter with uh, the Michael Mann movie. He's a guy like, there's a Char Ars Bulldog. That's a, a lazy safety slugs. That's him. That's him. He knows his shit, right? Okay. Got to meet him at the, at the Three Gun Nationals. I was shooting Three Gun Nationals. Uh, shooting USA was there. And I saw him there, and Mike Boyd's like, that's Jim Zibiani, you want to meet him? I'm like, yeah, and I, inter and I had them actually do an episode of the show on him. And he was so happy that he was recognized, the whole episode was dedicated to him, the clips from the movie. I wanted him to get that day in the sun that's just been talked about in the shooting community forever. That's awesome. Uh, so he won in uh, 84, 88. Uh, Lance, I met him, he got me into shooting down the street. Uh, he's kind of a dick, but I like him anyway. Dave Does it Genson. end at 94? What's on? No, 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 it goes around the other side. What's so, on? So I got started in the 90s. <laughs> there's yeah. A, yeah, there's a lot but of this is where I actually, actually, actually where I very first started, a year before that, in here somewhere. So Dave was winning. That was limited. This is unlimited, the race gun scope stuff. So I had a you guys, long... You guys see all these? And then I jumped to yeah, Carry Optics. <laughs> Carry Optics became the most popular division in all of competition. So I jumped on there a couple of years ago. And I just won it uh, a few, uh, a week ago or whatever, so I'm going to be on there again. I, li I like Tatiana. the humility just glossing over your name on here like 30 mm -hmm. times in a row. And then uh, my Tatiana's done good. She's wonderful. She's been beating men and coming in here drunk. Oh, she won again. Yeah. Like, Very cool. So, uh, so that's all that, that shoots them. And I got a three gun. That's where it really, where it took me next level. Mm -hmm. So I was training James Cameron here in 97. And um, he wanted to lay down money for classes. It was the first big star that ever came. Like the, the, uh, before that was Norm, came out with 38. <laughs> and then I, I worked with uh, Dan Aykroyd one Wait, time. Wait, Norm from Cheers? Yeah. <laughs> I love that everybody calls him Norm. Yeah, so Norm came out with 38, gave him a class, like, yay, my career started. 
And then years later, uh, my bodybuilding friend, John Ritzling, who's like bodybuilding stars from the Arnold era, this big six foot three, blonde mammoth monster man. He's like, I'm bringing out James Cameron. And I'll show you over here like the mountain kind of. So on this mountain, I laid out and nothing, none of these targets, just dirt, no property, no nothing. So here, here. It all started here. Yeah. This, this place is legacy. Yeah, so in 90, 97, he came out and uh, well, for like three, like a month, I'm like, he's never coming. Right? So many people promise, nothing ever happens. It's all never gonna happen, right? The day is coming. I'm like, he's really coming, holy shit. So I put a million water bottles up there, stupid shit. Laid out my crazy assault weapons, you know, Styrol, HK91, all the guns you could buy in the recycler back then without even doing paperwork, right? Lay all this shit out. And he comes down in a couple of Hummers. He's got this guy, uh, uh, William Abernathy with him. He's the writer. He's the guy in, in, uh, uh, the, in Titanic, he's the guy with the, the, the smiley face bullet hole. He, he's actually his friend, you know? He lives in his place at the time. They all come out, and he's got these bodybuilder guys, his friend, and they all like jump with all the assault weapons. Oh my God, look at these crazy guns, oh my God. And Cameron's like, I heard you're some kind of a grandmaster pistol shooter. Hmm. I'm like, yeah. He's like, what is that? I go, well, uh, he's got this crazy weaver stance. He kind of fixes the weaver stance. He's cupping saucer. And he's got a little combat commander from Terminator 2, some Israeli trainer got it for him. And he's like, bending his shit. He goes, stop. I'm like, ah. I'm like, James Cameron's yelling at me, holy shit. And he's like, before I change all this shit, let me see if you can even freaking shoot, right? Oh. So, so I got a 2011 on back then, I didn't build it, obviously. And so I'm like, holy shit, 40 caliber is way more powerful than nine, nine millimeter stuff we shoot nowadays. So I'm like, all right, okay, you know, have these targets lined up, paper targets. So literally, Jesus Christ came down through my body, shred these targets, we holster. He's like, holy shit, though, did you guys see that shit? Did you see that? Just like a machine gun? What, what, show me the grip, fix this dance. And all that stuff. And back then I was super broke. So he laid down a check for 10 grand. I'm like, that's the biggest money I ever saw. One, one thing for me back then. And we started talking and this funny little story comes out of it. We're sitting on the tailgate. And at the moment, Titanic is railing in theaters at the moment, right? Yeah. I'm like, you must be like killing right now. He's like, no, I'm freaking losing it. I'm pissed. I'm like, what? He's like, do you know what happened? I'm like, no. And his attorney is with him. So Jim Schmidt's with him, his attorney guy. The story will be all cut out later. It's too long. So anyway, he goes, well, the, the, you know, 20th Century Fox is like, this movie's taking forever. You're repainting the deck 20 times, got $400,000. You gotta change all the drapes. Who gives a shit if it's Manila? They already made this piece of shit with Catherine Zeta Jones and freaking some other guy. It's it's gonna be a bomb. It's a freaking bomb. Who cares if Peter Gallagher and Jerry? It's a fucking bomb. Shut it. He goes, fuck you. I'll make it my own fucking money my fucking way, motherfuckers. Fuck off. And call it shit, right? And, he, and he's like, oh, he's like, good. You finish with your money. Fix this fucking bomb. Ruin the studio. So he leaves there, right? He's telling the story to us, and him and Jim realize, like, yeah, we, we said we weren't gonna, we were gonna not do our own thing. They didn't sign anything. They had the argument, and at that moment, they realize that they're getting all the back end money they were promised, and everything. So he, he ends up going from worth like seven mil to four hundred million dollars in a few weeks. <laughs> so he's coming out every Thursday for I don't know how many years, and during that time, I realized like. We're kind of every th Thursday, I like to think of some new, new scenarios, new shooting. But uh, my friend uh, Kirk Hyatt got me into three gun. So it opened up a whole new world for us to train with shotguns, pistols, rifles, long range. So I didn't do it. I didn't do it for James Cameron, but it helped that I got into three gun and that bled in. Is he a good after all that time? How is he as a shooter? He is the deadliest uh, director shooter out there. <laughs> the only guy that's now there is the director of John Wick because he's here all the time because yeah. Jim came out re about two or three years ago he's still like it took literally an hour to get back online he was super good but Chad Stahelski he's been training like for years you know like all the time so he's like I, I call him the deadliest director on the planet the first when I came into this room and I saw this safe with all these pockets and all these weapons this, this is this is pretty neat is this for display you got to shoot no, all this, these this is the this is the range training guns Ammo, gear, accessories, holsters. Well, holsters over there, but this is where I need all my stuff, you know. Say, so everybody, this is all the celebrities, all the actors. Everybody all comes here to train, so they're all here using all this stuff. Every major star you could possibly think of has shot these guns. They're beat to crap and ugly, some of them, but there's no point in refinishing them because there's a legacy behind some of them. All right, well, that's what I think everybody's interested in. At least I am. Now, we got a door over here, I noticed, when I first came here, with a whole bunch of signatures. Yeah. Is there a story? Did somebody one day just go, hey, sign the door? But um, just came up with the idea of having him sign the door and it just started taking off and literally there's not, not much room left. Like there's there's James Cameron, that looks like Jim Carrey. There's Keanu up there. I was gonna say, do you recognize what, what are some of the names? Um, it's, it's, it's everybody. It's uh it's, uh, it's 
everybody's seen videos of them a lot of the doors. How old is the door? Uh, probably 2014 or so. So it's just, it's just you name it, you know, Charlie Theron, uh, a, lot, a lot of people. It's a Chris Pine. Is that Rand Paul? Yeah, Rand Paul. Yeah. I mean, he literally was the worst shooter that's ever walked in. <laughs> We won't. We, nobody, nobody sees no him. We ain't done now. He can always go back to I mean, more. he does good things, but I mean, he was a that's a That's a pretty unique He had a shoulder injury. He's like a ball to his shoulder or something. <laughs> John Wayne. How about him? He's another one, one, one of your heroes, I was going to say. He's yeah. a Clint Eastwood type. John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, two of my biggest heroes. Like, I'd love to meet Clint Eastwood. I wanted to meet Burt Reynolds really bad, but I was really bummed out when it happened a couple years ago.